This is the video for lesson 12.4, where we are going to be talking about the shape of data distribution. You will need a new note sheet for this lesson. It is a half sheet, probably printed on a color of my choice. I just haven't printed it yet, so that looks like this. Just has some vocabulary and a couple of things for you to fill out. So, here we go. Here's the vocabulary that you'll need for this lesson. The first word is called distribution. What distribution is, is the arrangement of the data values. Fill that in. The second word is called cluster. The formal definition of a cluster, we have talked about it before, is that data are grouped closely together to form a cluster. The third vocabulary word is called a gap. A gap is when the numbers uh, have no data values, meaning the scale on the bottom or the number line has nothing above it. Either no X if it's a line plot or no bar if it's a histogram or a bar graph. So just fill in the word no and move on to the next one. The next word is a peak. The peak is the most frequent occurring value. So let's fill that in. The most frequent occurring value it actually is the mode. It's going to be the highest if it's a line plot, or the tallest bar if it's a histogram or a bar graph. The last word is called symmetry. Symmetry is when the left side of the distribution looks like the right. You could fold it in half at the middle point and the data would match on either side. This is a section in your math book that I actually took because it describes a line plot very well and it talks about what symmetrical distribution is, putting the two vocabulary words together. So let's deal with that definition first. Data that are evenly distributed between the left and the right side, just like the word symmetric, have what's called symmetric distribution. And now this line plot over here is what the rest of this paragraph is talking about. How would we describe something like this? Well, we could say that there's a cluster. That's the second uh, sentence here. The distribution shows a cluster of several data values within the 10 to 12 interval. Notice that they use the word interval even though it's not a histogram. The other thing to note are these gaps. The gaps 9 and 13 have no data values. That's another thing you can do to describe the distribution. The other thing you can talk about is the peak. So the highest is at 10. So the sentence the value 10 is a peak because it's the most frequently occurring value is another way to describe distribution. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking at the shape of our graphs and talking about them, describing them with sentences. When describing, you can answer these questions. Is it symmetrical? That's the first thing. So you can answer yes, it has symmetrical distribution, or no, it's not symmetrical. Second thing you can answer is, are there any gaps or clusters? Clusters or gaps. Does it matter? I'm going to put clusters first. Where is the peak? That's another thing you can ask yourself. And are there any outliers? That's another thing you can talk about when asked to describe the distribution. So again, this is an example using a line plot they talked about the cluster, they talked about the gaps, and the peak, and there are no outliers. The thing that this example right here didn't say is that it's not symmetrical. I'm going to show you another couple examples. So here we have two box plots, and very simply I'm just going to talk about how you know whether it's symmetrical or not. If the space between the boxes and the whiskers are all the same, you can say that it is symmetrically distributed or evenly distributed. 
if you see that one box is longer than another, one whisker is longer than another, then it is safe to say that it is not symmetrical. So really quick visual, you can tell whether a box plot is symmetrical or not just by looking at the space and the gap between the boxes and the whiskers. Here we have another line plot that is symmetrical as an example of how you can describe using those questions. So the directions say describe the shape of the distribution. First thing you can talk about, that it is symmetrical. The shape of the distribution is symmetric. And then that the explanation is that the left side of the data looks like the right side. That uses the definition. Then we can talk about the cluster. Where are most of the data clustering? There is a cluster from $13 to $15, so right here. And there are no gaps. If there are no gaps, you literally just say there are no gaps. And then talk about the peak. The peak of the distribution is at $14, and there are no outliers. So this is an example of how you can describe. Notice there are a lot of sentences answering each one of those questions from your notes. Here's another example using a histogram. The histogram is a little small, I know, but basically there's this big gap over here, then there's this outlier over here, and most of the data occurs um, at the left side of the graph. Again, same directions, describe the shape. It is not symmetric, that's what you start out saying. The shape of the distribution is not symmetric. Then talk about the clusters. There is a cluster from one, and this point right here is 79. So that's why you're seeing from 1 to 79. Then talk about the gap. Where is that gap? The distribution has a gap from, you would just look down here, here's the 80, and then here is the 2, um, 199. So you just get those numbers from the bottom of the histogram. The peak, the highest, is on the left side at the interval 20 to 39. So that's this part of the histogram, and then there is an outlier, and then you have to say what interval it actually is at to be more specific. That's another example for you. Tomorrow we're going to also touch on this idea of measures of center and spread when a graph is either symmetrical or not. If the data is symmetrical, yes, we are going to use the mean and the mad to describe the spread. If it's not symmetrical, we can't use these two. Instead, we're going to use the median and the IQR to describe the spread. Again, the spread means how are they arranged, how are they distributed. It depends on whether it's symmetrical or not. So this is an example. You don't have to write anything. However, I do want you to listen through the entire explanation. Here is a line plot showing some data. It clearly is not symmetrical. The directions, let me back up, um, say that we're going to choose an appropriate measure to describe the, the center and the spread. So we either have to pick mean or median or MAD or IQR. Those are the two choices and it depends on whether it's symmetrical or not. The data is not symmetric and there's an outlier. So we're going to pick, according to that flowchart, the median and the IQR to use. And then the second part of it is actually finding the median and finding the IQR back from chapter 11. That's a review. And this is the answer. Actually, once you found it, the median is 12. And then the first quartile is 11, just reporting out. The third quartile is 13. And the interquartile range is 2. Here's the end sentence that is kind of the summary. The data are centered around 12 states. So that's the peak. The spread around the center is about two states. So that's getting at what the IQR will be telling you. Since the IQR is two, that is saying that most of the data is centered around here and about two away, which is actually what you're seeing. Here's one for you to try. This is just asking you, like the beginning of the video, to describe the shape of the distribution. So those four questions that you had in your notes, 
would be what uh, you'd like to, what, what you would want to look at. And it is a box plot for you to look at and just write a couple sentences describing the distribution. We'll do this more in class tomorrow.